I ate mac and cheese before I was even born. Needless to say, I have cooked and eaten a plethora of different options over the last 30 years. Using a new technique, I can practically make these recipes in my sleep and end up with dinner in my bowl in less than 15 minutes, with only two dishes that need to be cleaned, by the way. Which makes me beg the question, why couldn't I have learned this sooner? At the end of the video, I will show you how to quickly reheat any leftovers that are as creamy and flavorful as when you first made them. So stick around. Let's get into it. This mac has multiple layers to it, and the subtle kick of heat will keep you warm during these cold winter months. We will start with a pot on a scale, and we will add 410 grams of chicken broth, 240 grams of fat-free fair life milk, and 224 grams of small shell pasta. You might be like, hey Nick, why chicken broth? Between the intense chicken flavor the broth brings to the overall dish, along with the fact that we need to salt our noodles anyway, broth is my new go-to for any chicken or beef-based mac. I don't care what type of noodle you use, but make sure it is a smaller one so most of them can fit under the liquid in the pan. Doing so will actually ensure that the noodles are cooked while on the stovetop and avoids chewy or tougher noodles when it is time to eat. Put the pan on the stovetop, put it on high heat, Give it a stir to combine and set a timer for 10 minutes. To make sure we don't burn the milk, you might have to slightly tweak your temperatures on your individual stovetop to get this recipe perfect. But as long as we constantly stir as the pasta water comes to a boil, we shouldn't have a problem. While that is heating up, we can prep our other ingredients. Let's talk chicken. I bought three different frozen chicken options, thinking that there would be a clear winner. Well, because there usually is. While they all have different tastes and textures, I think they each have their own utility in this recipe. The Walmart brand reminds me of my childhood when I would be at a friend's house and my friend's mom wanted to whip up something quick and easy for all of us. She would make boxed mac and cheese and just throw in some cheap chicken tenders on the side that I would honestly just top my mac with. It may not be luxury, but it hits the guilty pleasure button very well. Then the Covington Farms brand reminds me if I were to go to a more modern Chinese restaurant that has a variety of offerings and on the menu there is a fried chicken mac and cheese. The chicken has a unique breading that reminds me of a sweet and sour chicken that is made with chicken thighs and tastes great in its own right. Lastly, you have what you would find at a higher end restaurant that offers a side of chicken mac. These chicken tenders are made with juicy all white chicken breast and has a perfectly breaded exterior but cost a few more dollars than the rest because of the premium cut of meat. The best part, they all have essentially the same macros, so you can't go wrong. Today, I am going with 84 grams of the higher class tender. I'll throw it in a preheated 400 degree air fryer, give it a couple sprays of oil, and cook for six to eight minutes, flipping halfway through. All we need now is our cheese. This dish requires a cheese that will thicken all of the leftover liquid once the pasta is done, and I am calling on old reliable Miss Velveeta to get this accomplished specifically the sharp cheddar flavor. For the calories, ease of finding at a grocery store, and the smooth, creamy power it holds, it was a necessary addition in my opinion. Six slices, peeled and ready to go. Then, I wanted to boost the protein of this dish for minimal calories while making it even cheesier, and the best way to do that is fat-free cheese. Let's add 56 grams of a fat-free cheddar to our plate of Velveeta, and into the fridge it goes. Of course, we need some buffalo sauce for a buffalo mac, so let's add 50 grams of it into a small bowl and put it next to our pot of pasta. The pasta water should be getting close to a boil at this point, so it is time to make it our main focus. I am giving the pot a stir every 30 seconds to a minute, making sure there are no noodles sticking to the bottom and the milk is not being scorched. This will give us enough time in between stirs to quickly flip the chicken tender and get back to stirring. Once the timer goes off, immediately take it off the heat Add the plate of cheese and stir constantly for two to three minutes. The cheese should completely melt in this time frame and it should help the mac start to cool down a bit. At this point, it is time to add the buffalo sauce and mix for another minute or so to really get all of the flavors combined into one. The cheese may look a bit thin or liquidy at this point, but don't worry, letting this sit for a couple minutes will give this more time to thicken up and we need to get our toppings finished anyway. Take the chicken tender, chop it up, and put it in a small bowl. Nothing screams buffalo mac like blue cheese, so to another small bowl, I will add 14 grams of it, which really just takes this mac to another level. Grab a bowl, give the mac one final mix, and layer in the mac, followed by the chicken and blue cheese. You now have a buffalo mac you can either split with someone as a side dish or have as an entree all to yourself. The goal of my OG mac and cheese recipe was to make it taste like boxed macaroni on steroids, 
and I believe we did just that. Start with a pan on a scale and add 460 grams water, 240 grams fat-free Fairlife milk, 224 grams elbow macaroni, and 4 grams of salt. Since this recipe doesn't have the added salt and flavor from the broth, we have to add it ourselves. If you don't mind the slight drop in protein, you can use a regular fat-free milk here as well and can make up for the protein by using a higher protein noodle option like chickpea pasta. I personally prefer a flour-based noodle with the more expensive milk, but you can't lose either way. Mix the pot up, put it on the stove top, crank it up to high heat, and give it a stir. While that starts cooking, set a timer for 10 minutes and let's get our cheese prepped. While I have a soft spot for the green bottle parmesan, Ethan Chabowski has demonstrated in multiple videos how the cheap stuff just doesn't melt that well or have the same depth of flavor as the real thing. Since the sole focus of this dish is to have a velvety smooth mac that smacks your taste buds, I am going to grate in 15 grams of the more expensive Parmigiano Reggiano. In the same bowl, add 84 grams of fat-free cheddar and 10 grams of cornstarch and thoroughly mix together. This mac has a lot more liquid in it, meaning we need an additional assistant to help thicken our mac. Cornstarch will do just that and we need very little of it, making it a no-brainer. Mixing it with the cheese will help spread it out and prevent clumps or graininess in the final product. Checking back on our mac, it is starting to simmer and this is a good time to give it a stir. The last thing we need to do is get the sharp cheddar Velveeta slices ready, and for this recipe, we need five. Unwrap them and make sure you stir the pot more frequently as the pot gets hotter and hotter. Once the timer goes off, remove the pot from the heat source and instantly add only the Velveeta. We not only need the mixture to cool down, but the Velveeta to melt as well, so let's get both things done at once. After the Velveeta is done being melted, add the cheese and cornstarch mixture and start stirring ASAP. We want to make sure the cornstarch doesn't cause the cheese to become grainy, so from here on out we will stir constantly for two to three minutes. It may look watery at first, but as the mac and cheese cools it will start to thicken up, especially after it sits for a couple minutes. Once the mac and cheese looks like this, I will let it cool for two minutes and give it one more stir. Pour into your bowl and relive all your childhood memories as you go to town on this upgraded mac. To reheat, add 15 grams of milk to your mac and throw in the microwave for 45 seconds. Stir everything together, add another 10 grams of milk, and reheat for an additional minute. Stir to combine and watch it turn into a creamy mac that's nearly as good as it was the day before. These recipes would be perfect as a side to a smash burger, and in this video here, I show you how to make one. This smash burger has a homemade protein bun and is another recipe that goes from a thought in your mind to a meal on your plate in no time. Until next time, deuces.